Hey folks, it's Lenny McGill here with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in Nashville today in the Nashville studios. And I've got a big announcement because today, right here, right now, we're going to announce for the first time that we have a fixed pyramid trigger available. Now, many of you know that the pyramid trigger is the best adjustable trigger on the market. And we've sold a bunch of them and people really love them because it does reduce the trigger pull, the trigger length, reduces the reset and will make you a faster and more accurate shooter. Absolutely. In fact, most of you know that uh, most accuracy problems come as people manipulate the trigger. So lining up the sights, you know, pretty easy. Everybody gets it. But as you pull the trigger, the gun's moving. And if it has a heavy trigger pull, you'll have a tendency to pull the gun off a line. And typically, uh, if you're right-handed, you'll pull the gun low and to the left. As you squeeze the trigger, boom, it just goes down. And it's kind of a natural thing. And a lot of people anticipate to, oh, you know. So uh, the uh, pyramid trigger helps eliminate that because it breaks shorter and crisper. So it's not quite as far as travel and it's short and it's certainly lighter. And I'm going to demonstrate that today with a device that uh, I've had in my possession for 30 years. It's a, uh, a standard uh, trigger weight. It's a dead weight trigger weight. And it's way better than the factory uh, or the new ones with a spring or a, a digital control. This thing is just rock solid. And uh, we'll have these available on our website soon. So that's another neat thing that's coming up as well. So uh, like I said, the pyramid trigger is what this is all about. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate a factory Glock trigger. And then we're going to drop in our new non-adjustable or fixed trigger and show you how light it can be and show you how to get it even lighter after that. All right, so here's your standard Glock. This is a Glock 17. Everything's standard on it. It's got a standard trigger on it. Now, everybody knows that Glock triggers are long and spongy. I'll go ahead and left-handed so you can see my trigger finger. Just It's a long motion and kind of spongy back here. And then it's there, and there's the click. And the reset is not bad. It's you know basically right out there, but there's a little bit of travel there. But there's a long motion there. The other thing that I don't like about the Glock trigger is uh, the shape of the safety, the trigger safety, the safe action trigger mechanism uh, is sharp. And in fact, I've seen it on a lot of the newer guns, the newer Glocks that are coming out. It's, it's really sharp to the point of where it's almost painful on your finger. So uh, the pyramid trigger, what we've done is we've redesigned the trigger shoe and the trigger safety and made it a little bit wider and uh, certainly more comfortable on your finger. Still incorporates the safety mechanism, but it is just more comfortable on your trigger. We've also, with this fixed trigger, we've shortened that entire stroke. And you'll see that we've also lightened the, uh, uh, the trigger because of that. Now, this is our dead weight here. Uh, the way this works is uh, the, the bottom is a three pound weight and it just unscrews. There's a one, uh, there's another one pound weight and here's a half a pound. It also comes as an accessory or an option, a, a three pounder for you guys who have a, a, a revolver and want to play with that. Uh, the uh, extra three pounds really puts this thing out to about 12 pounds. And uh, I don't think that most of you will have a 12 pound trigger. I hope not. <laughs> but revolvers do, double action revolvers. This uh, uh, set is really designed for you know, your, your basic pistols. So um, as it stands right here, there's a two pounder. We're going to go ahead and add the three pound weight on the bottom and give it a total of five. And this trigger being uh, from the factory has been shot a little bit. It's going to be between five and five and a half. And that's pretty typical with a Glock after you've had it for a little bit of time. It'll kind of wear itself in. It starts at about six and maybe five and a half right in that ballpark. And if you shoot it a little bit, it'll, it'll come down between five and five and a half. So right now I've got five pounds on here. And uh, I've got my half pound waiting right here. Now the trick to this, of course the gun is unloaded. Be sure of that, okay, there's no ammunition on this table, no ammunition in this room, so I'm not really gonna have any chance to load it. The trick to this is to be consistent in the way you handle the gun. Because the Glock has the safe action trigger, I can't really go straight up and down because I will not activate that straight action trigger. But what I can do is tilt the gun just enough so I can get the safe action trigger to be depressed and then get it right where it's supposed to be and then lift up gently. And there it is on five, right? Just like that. It actually went at five. I'll try it one more time. 
And there we are at five. And why does it want to spin on me? There we go. So right there is five. And there's five and a half. So it's, uh, or, or between, like I said, five, five and a half. So if I put five and a half on, it should go right away. It does. Can't even get it off the table. So I'm going to say this trigger is between five and five and a quarter, just based upon what I'm seeing here, because I can kind of get it up just enough. Now, if I tilt the gun a little bit more and get that down towards the tip of the trigger, it's going to go just like that. So that said, uh, it's safe to assume that this gun, as it stands, has a trigger between five and five and a quarter uh, for the trigger pull. Uh, that's about as scientific as we can get based upon you know, where your trigger finger is and how you're pulling. But we know it's not going to break at, uh, say, three pounds. In fact, I'll go ahead and try that just because I like to experiment. Now we have two on the base and one there. That's a three pound trigger. And I'll come up. And no, it's not going to go at all. So if I put three and a half pounds on, do the same thing. Nope, it's not going to go at all. So now I can game this thing and kind of go really fast. <laughs> but that's not what the objective is. The objective is to be consistent and try to come up with a, uh, a trigger. Now, before we go into the, uh, the, uh, the fixed trigger that I'm about to install in this gun, and I'll show you the difference. Remember now we're five and a quarter, right there between five, five and a quarter, not really five and a half, but five and a quarter, I think is a, is a good asset, assumption for this gun. Before we go ahead and, and show you what the, fa uh, the fixed uh, non-adjustable trigger will be, let me just show you one of these uh, adjustable triggers that is set up in my competition gun, a little fun gun I have, uh, in a Glock 34. It is, of course, unloaded, and uh, it has a very short, let me go ahead and show you here real quick on this side. I'll, I'll do left-handed so you can see it. Very short trigger pull, and the reset is just barely there, right there. <laughs> so there is how fast you can manipulate the trigger, and that allows you to uh, shoot better double taps, faster times, and get better scores. So I've got it set at three and a half right now, okay? I've got two on the bottom, I've got a one pound weight here, and I've got a half pound weight here. And this is gonna be between three and three and a half, I believe. So it probably will go right now. We'll see if I can get it up. I'm gonna go very slowly. And make sure I depress the trigger. I've got it down there, okay, here we go. All right, yeah. So just got up off the table and went. I'll do it one more time. I've got it depressed. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, a, a real good assumption, this trigger is just at three and a half, maybe a little bit more, but it's kind of right where I want it. The reset is so minuscule that really allows me to get up and do double taps. And this is a competition gun. It's not a, not a carry gun and it's designed for competition. So uh, that's why I've got the trigger set so tight. The problem we've experienced with adjustable triggers is that some people get it in their gun, they over adjust it, they play with the adjustments it's so much that they kind of confuse it up a little bit and all of a sudden it doesn't work. And so they send it back and we fix it and then we send it back and back and forth a little bit with the adjustable. So years ago, you know, we've sold, like I said, tens of thousands of these pyramid triggers and years ago I, I started thinking, you know what, I should probably develop a non-adjustable fixed trigger with all the best attributes and, and get it to rest in there between three and a half and four pounds because that's a good self-defense carry. Right there at four, four pounds is a great self-defense carry. And um, so over the last six months, we've been toying with this thing and going through a lot of R&D, and we finally, I believe, came up with what I believe is going to be the best drop-in, non-adjustable trigger for your gun. It's just, just that easy. It's a drop-in trigger. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate right here, right now. So um, it's available in all the different colors we typically do, of course. Uh, we've got the black and black, black and red. Here's a black and red. We've got some gold. We've got silver. We've got, like I said, black and red is a very popular one. Here's a gold and black and gold. So typically black would signify the shoe and gold uh, would be the safety or the second uh, uh, color would be the safety. So black and red, black and silver, black and gold are very, 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 very popular. Black and black, of course, is probably the most popular of all. So I'm going to take this black and red one. 
I'm going to drop it in. And we're going to do a simple disassembly, reassembly here. Now, you've probably seen me do this a million times, but I'm going to do it once again. Of course, the gun is loaded. There's no magazine in there. I'm going to go ahead and pull the slide back and verify that it is unloaded and now pull the trigger in a safe direction. To uh, disassemble the Glock, we're going to take our hand from our normal grip and just wrap it around like so, because I just want to pull it back just about an eighth or a quarter of an inch up top there. So I'm disengaging uh, the slide from the slide lock, which I'm about to pull down on both sides. Slide lock, also known as the takedown lever. It's this little button right here. It's on both sides. So I'm going to come up with both fingers, well, I'll say finger and a thumb, and I'm going to pull down. I'm going to pull them down. It's spring-loaded. I'm going to hold it down, and as I hold it down, I'm going to let the slide go forward, and I'm going to kind of walk it off. Now, I want to be very careful not to let the slide fall off, because it will do that, and it could fall down and hit itself on what they call the nose ring, which is this guy right here. And if you hit the nose ring on a hard object, it will bend. And if it bends, it's almost difficult, almost impossible. It's very difficult to uh, straighten it out. Like I said, almost impossible. So you never want to bend that nose ring because it's very difficult to get it back. And if you crack it, uh, it's time for a new slide. And we can sell you one of those as well. But I don't want to. So I want to make sure you're careful when you take it off and you place it aside. So here's our frame. Inside the frame is the trigger and the trigger housing mechanism. And we're going to go ahead and remove that and replace the trigger with the non-adjustable pyramid trigger, the fixed non-adjustable. It's the new one. And I'm going to show you now we're going to go from five, five and a quarter to say four, four and a quarter. About a pound difference just by switching out the trigger, plus a much more comfortable shoe and the ability to you know, kind of customize it with your own colors. So first thing we're going to do is take a punch, voila, and I'm going to remove the trigger housing pin back here in the back. There are three pins, trigger housing pin, and this gun is a Gen 3. There is a trigger pin and a locking block pin. The Gen 5 guns only have the trigger housing pin and the trigger pin. They don't have the locking block pin any, anymore. Gen 4s will have the locking block pin. Gen 3s have the locking block uh, pin. The early Gen 1s and Gen 2s only had the trigger pin, and then they added the locking block pin. And then they took it away in Gen 5, which still baffles me, but they did. So now, here's how we do this. Take the first one I'm going to take out. It will be the trigger housing pin. I'll just take my punch, put it right in the hole there. It's a 3 32nd inch punch. Fits it perfectly, and just push it straight down. And the um, uh, notice I'm using my uh, blue painter's tape uh, armorer's block. Because I want, I want to capture the pins and make sure they don't roll away. Two, this is a great place, a great surface to work on the gun, can't hurt the gun, and I have a place to push the pins through. Next pin we're going to remove is the locking block pin right up here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my punch right on top of it. Again, the punch fits perfectly. I'm just going to push straight down. You could use a hammer here, but this one I've taken apart several times and it comes out pretty easy. And I'll pull it out and let that capture into my donut as well. And finally, the trigger pin. Okay, now that captures the trigger into the frame, as well as the trigger housing. But, and this one sometimes will give you trouble because it's captured by the spring on the slide stop. So what we'll do sometimes, if you have trouble pushing this out, is you'll want to lift the slide stop up and jiggle it a little bit. What you're trying to do is take the um, ring of the slide stop, which I'll show you when I take it out, off of the notch of the pin, which I'll show you when I take out, so that it comes out easily. Now, I've got this one, like I said, worked a bunch, so it comes out pretty easily. Sometimes you really need to jostle this thing and push it back and forth even to be able to get it so that the pin comes out easily. But now, I, like I said, I've preloaded this to come out. Pin comes out easily. I'm going to take now the locking block and just pry it straight out and put it straight into that donut hole so I don't lose it. Voila. Okay, here comes a slide stop, also known as a slide release. It just comes straight out. And now here comes the entire trigger mechanism, which consists of the trigger bar, the trigger shoe, the trigger safety, all this up here, and the trigger housing, the connector, the ejector is right here, that ejects the rounds. And then the trigger spring is inside. And here's how this works. It goes back and forth just like that. Let's see if I can get my hands out of the way you can see. 
And that's the motion that happens in your trigger. As you pull the trigger, it comes back. The trigger spring inside here actually resets the trigger. You're pulling against the trigger that's around the striker or the firing pin. As you pull the trigger, you're pulling on that. And that's another way we'll talk about how to reduce your trigger pull with using a lighter spring. Okay, to remove the bar from your trigger housing, we're going to pull the spring and then tilt this out just like that and lift it straight out. Now it's very important you understand the relationship of this trigger spring with the trigger housing and with the trigger bar. As I see it right now, I'm looking at it from this perspective, okay? And uh, now I'm gonna turn it around so you see what I see. Let's come back this way. Put my hand back here so you can see. I want you to get in close on that spring. What we wanna see is we wanna see that the spring makes an S shape. It's an open end coil spring. And that S shape is very important. You wanna make sure that when you install that spring, should it come un uh, uh, unattached to this, um, trigger housing that you always install it as you're looking at it and it has an S shape. So that's how you want it. You don't want it to be backwards going this way. You want it to be S. Just think of that of it like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the trigger bar from the spring. Now there's a little gap there and so basically I'm just going to come down and twist it straight off and it takes a couple hands to hold on to that spring and out it comes, just like that. So there's the trigger bar. And there is your trigger housing with the trigger spring. I'm going to leave it attached to the trigger housing. This is the factory connector. And we can change that out with our three and a half pound connector. And we'll do that a little bit later uh, to show you how much more you can lighten the trigger with the three and a half pound connector. But right now, all we're going to do is take the bar and I'm going to attach this, the trigger. And there's a little hole in the trigger in the bottom here. And that's it right, let's see if I'll bring it over here to the dark there, there you go. Right there, that little hole right back underneath there, that, right that one. And then I'm going to just go ahead and put that hole under here and capture that spring in the hole. And let's see here, yep, missed it. There we got it. Okay, and that's what it looks like, just like that. Then I bring it forward now to go ahead and place it back in. Just do the same thing. I, I, I twist it a little bit, stretch the spring, place it back into there, and that's how it works, just like that. So we want it to live there like that. So you can see it from that side. And then here's the top of what they call the cruciform. And there's the trigger bar itself right here. Now you'll notice how the bar runs next to the connector, and it will actually intersect with the connector right there. See if I can show that to you. And there's the connector. So it's really important that you just see the relationship. And that's it. I mean, once you, once you do that, now we're going to go ahead and, and reinstall it. And this is all, all this is going to be done in really two minutes or less without all this talk around it. So here we go. We're going to take the trigger bar and the trigger housing and place it directly into the frame. And there's a little hole down here, a channel here where it goes. The trigger bar really goes one place. Everything goes one place. Once you get it started, you're going to hear a nice little click here when it snaps into place. There you go. Okay. Now, the first thing I like to do is just check my holes. Okay, everything kind of lines up. And because I've anchored the trigger housing, let's go ahead and now really make it uh, set and we'll put the trigger housing pin back in. It's the plastic pin that goes right here. And we just go ahead and take our uh, nylon tipped hammer and just tap it in. And you'll see uh, that you can actually true it up with a punch. Just come in and kind of push it down just so it goes all the way in and, and doesn't interfere with the grip at all. And there it is. Perfect. So now the next one, and this is very important that we're going to put in the next pin we have to put in would be the locking block pin, but we've got to put the locking block in first. So the locking block just goes right in the top and it's got a slot for it. Once you find it, it only goes in one way and goes straight down. And then the next thing we want to do is do the locking block pin. We don't want to do the trigger pin yet because we have to install our slide stop lever. And we have to make sure that this spring is under the locking block pin. Okay, so let's see if we can get in here close and see that. So you're going to want to make sure that this spring right here is underneath 
this locking block pin. And the only way to do that is to make sure you put the locking block pin in first. Because if you put the pin in, the, the trigger pin in first, and you put the slide stop in, and then you put the locking block pin, it'll end up going underneath this spring and it won't have the proper spring pressure. And if it doesn't have the proper spring pressure, that means it'll just vibrate up on shooting and lock your slide back. And you'll think, hey, what happened? And that's typically what happens. People call us all the time and say, what happened? I got, you know, my slide lock is not, you know, it's locking black and back and it's because they put these in the wrong order. So first thing we wanna do, put the locking block in and then the locking block pin. And I'll tap that in. Nice thing about these nylon hammers, you can actually beat on the frame and nothing happens. That's why we like the nylon hammers. Okay, and uh, I'll true that up as well, just with my fingers, just to get that to push through on the other side. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and drop our slide stop in. And this is where I can look again to verify that that trigger pin hole, Slice stop goes right into a little notch right here that's just there. But I want to go ahead and push it in to make sure that trigger pin hole is round and, and not, you know, any way misshaped because I've got to put the pin back in here now. And that looks good. And sometimes I can just push this pin straight in. There we go. Okay. So now I'll true this up too. Sometimes you'll hear when you go to true up this, this, um, uh, this, this pin, you'll hear the spring of the slide stop lever activate and push the slide stop down into the notch. So let's see if we can hear that, that little click. There it was. Real tiny little sound, says a little click, but what that tells me is that I've properly anchored the slide stop. So now, it is in that notch and the spring is pushing it down so it won't come out, it won't walk out by itself. That's really what the idea is. That, that slide stop actually captures the uh, pin, the trigger pin, and the trigger pin captures the slide stop. So it's a really neat uh, symbiotic relationship there. Okay, so now I've gone ahead and installed the non-adjustable fixed pyramid trigger. And I'm gonna put our slide back on, very simply. Line up our rails, make sure you get the back rails before you get too aggressive with it, and then go ahead and rack the slide. Feels good. Okay. Here we go. So again, we were at five, five and a quarter pounds right there with the factory. Here it is with the uh, non-adjustable fixed pyramid trigger. I've got two, three, four and a half right now. All right, broke there, I'll do it one more time, just to make sure I'm consistent, nice and easy, slow, slow. Right. I'll take the half off, we'll go to four. There you go. So four looks like it's gonna be the number, between four and four and a half. So maybe four and a quarter. I don't think it's going to go right there. That's perfect. And that's where we want it to be. Just right there, four, four and a quarter. Now, I can actually make that a little bit lighter by adding the three and a half pound connector. Yeah, so I think it's right there between four and four and a quarter because the, the half is going to just bump it right over. Watch this. Yeah. Okay, so now, that's pretty darn good. Drop in, take a pound, pound and a quarter off of your trigger, just like that. It's shorter, it's lighter, it's crisper, has a better feel to it, looks better, will give you a better performance, will make you a better shooter, just like that. I mean, really, it's a drop-in piece, easy installation. Uh, all you need really is a punch and a hammer, if you need the hammer at all. So, that said, let's go ahead and we'll take it apart, and I'll drop in the three and a half pound connector. Okay, so here we are now with a connector, and here's what's cool about this connector thing, is you can actually come back here with your punch and push it straight out from the rear. Here it comes. I see it. Okay, so there's the factory connector. 
got it halfway out. I'm going to take my punch and put it underneath here and just pry it up a little bit. The factory connector is out. I'm going to replace that factory connector. Okay, so there's our three and a half pound connector with the double diamonds. And it's probably the best one on the market. There are several others, obviously, but uh, ours has the NP3 coating. And uh, I've been making them for 25 years and everybody loves them. So let me stick this into the right place. You're going to notice that there is a channel here on the trigger housing that will accept the three and a half pound connector. And the, and the short leg just goes right into the slot. So we got to get up on top of it. Here we go. And again, we want to be careful not to bend it. So we're, it's going to be tight because it's designed to be tight. And it is designed to have a slight angle off of the piece because it's not quite 90 degrees there when you stick it up there. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so there's our three and a half pound connector now installed into the trigger housing. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and get this set back up. Perfect. Looks like everything's going to work. Now, here's one little tip for you, too, real quick, before we go too much further. A little drop of oil right on the top of that connector. A couple things to look at. Of course, we've finished our trigger bar in titanium nitride, which is a very low coefficient of friction. And it's uh, uh, probably one of the, the hardest and, and best non-friction or, or frictionless materials. We've also coated our connector in NP3, which is another dry lube type connector. So they don't really need a lot of oil, but it is metal to metal. And so a little bit of oil may help. So when I talk about a little bit of oil, I'm just talking about a little drop and I'm gonna just drop it right here on top because that's where the connector and the trigger bar intersect. And that's basically what I'm looking for. Just that alone. Okay. now. I'm going to drop this all back into the gun and we'll put it back together and see if we can get a little lighter trigger pull. And we're ready to go ahead and put our slide back onto the, uh, the frame with the non-adjustable fixed trigger and the three and a half pound connector. Now, before we were right there at between four and four and a half, right there, say four and a quarter. It feels lighter already. Here's four and a half right here. See how that goes for us. And I'll take the half off. Here's four. Okay, I'll take the one off and go to three and a half. And that's where it's gonna be. Right there at three and a half. I'll try it one more time. Right there, right there. So now you saw us go from five and a quarter to four and a quarter to three and a half with the three and a half pound connector. So that's how you create a better trigger for your, your Glock. You go ahead and you get the pyramid trigger, the three and a half pound connector, and you can do it right in your own home, just like I did here. Take you five, 10 minutes and you'll have a better trigger guaranteed. Now, if you want to get even better, that's when you can get the safety plunger and the spring kit, which will give you lighter striker springs. So as you pull this trigger, you're actually pulling against the striker spring. So if you have a lighter striker spring, you'll have yet even more a lighter trigger. But for what we're talking about, three and a half pounds, four pounds is perfect for self-defense and perfect to make you a better shooter. And if you're a better shooter, if you're more accurate, you're going to be safer. And that's what it's all about. I'm Lenny McGill. Thanks for watching. This is, of course, the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop and the new non-adjustable fixed pyramid trigger.